This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, head over to BigHeadsMedia.com. Previously on TV Tuners. You want me to go back to Denver? The moon is falling. I am sponsored by Heelys.com. www.heelys.com. I told him about the altitude up here. I told him about the oxygen. I told him, man. I have to go to clown college? Yeah, I'm sorry about this, but, uh, gonna have to give you a little uh, death medicine. Sorry about that. And now, TV Tuners continue. Folks, and welcome to TV Tuners. It's a That's television right. podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co host and uh, son who had to kill his dad, Stairmaster. Hi, Marone. I can't Wait. believe it. <laughs> he, was, he was Irish. Oh. Ta 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 ta. There you go. That's I'll come in like a bit of patricide. Wait, is he? Wasn't he with the Italian? Yeah, Nail. but he 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 turned his he was an Irish and he turned on his dad. He got corrupted. Oh, that hence the lack of fealty. Yeah. Damn, the whole episode just made sense to me, and we just spoiled it within five seconds. Sorry about that, fellas. And uh, that voice you're hearing, of course, is our uh, other our guest co-host this week, and. Uh, guy trying to sell credit cards. Geo. Uh, yeah, man. People want to spend that money they don't have, and and they will, and that's how credit cards work. I think. I don't think it'll ever work. I'm a banker. (laughs) Well, let's test it out by just giving it to random drug addicts and homeless people and see if they fall into debt. We would never do that here at (laughs) Good Bank Inc. Who's considering it though? Like the. The camera zoomed in and did like that th- Hitchcock thing for a bit. I he think the implication was that the only reason he didn't, he gave the like big moral speech was because it was two black guys in front of him. Yes. Yeah, obviously it wasn't fuck that guy, but I think the camera <laughs> zoom was like a bit of film working that suggested he was actually, he actually realized, well, this is some good shit. Yeah, actually. so he's going to plagiarize I- it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, fuck that guy double. But I'm just saying, I'm saying that was some film working that I noticed. Yes. And we'll we'll talk about the history of credit cards a little later in the program because I I did do some research on it and I think Stair did as well. Education time. Come on, dude. Dude, dude, dude. Welcome to TV Tuners, a podcast about television and nothing else. Uh, Keo is education. Keo is not present. Uh, for this week's episode, uh, he said he was he, uh, good. Yeah, what well, he was? What happens to her? He died. I thought. Yeah. What are you talking about? He died. Well, he, he kicked a hornet's nest and got stung to death by the hornets. That's what. And, that's what the doctors told us. But the last time I saw Keo, he told me he was going in search of crystal clean water, and then yeah, Latin, that, next thing I know, he was in the hospital with a bunch of hornet stings. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, the last time I saw him, it said uh, Keo wasn't well. He was still back at the hotel. Also, and he that sent me along as a surrogate. Host. Also, that doctor you spoke to was the coroner. Oh, okay. Well, he introduced himself as Doctor Coroner, so I was very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> what an unfortunate coincidence! Yeah, He's, I guess he. I guess Doctor was the first name. So yeah, but he was a coroner. He apparently he was the coroner. Wait, I thought he was the doctor. But wait, he was the mother's son. So he's called Coroner Corner. Then. The doctor's a woman. Hmm. <laughs> Much to think about. <laughs> or perhaps it's best if we don't. Wait, was I supposed to think more about that line? 
Uh, no. I did not think much about that line. I shit. think it was. I, it's, it's just like how they apologize for the moon landing is like I, hidden in Fargo season four, episode one. If I'm not thinking about it, you shouldn't either. And by it, I mean everything. Very zen, bro. Yeah. Yes. We are a zen like podcast. And hey, if you like that zen like mentality, that. why not go and uh, subscribe? We're available on all of the podcast apps of your choice. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, we're there. Is it on Stitcher? It's on Stitcher. Yes! That's that's tight. Uh, yeah, we're we're available wherever you find your podcasts. You can we're go... also available on email. That's that's right. Oh, that's a good email. I'd, I'd suggest writing into that, because uh, some quality people on the other side of that email address. Yeah. If you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, or otherwise, you can send them to us at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Stairmaster? tvtunerspodcast at geocities.com. That's right. Ooh. Damn. They don't let just anybody start a website there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, of course, we are on the tweet, the twit space, the Twitter dome. We, we've got uh, at TV Tuners where you can find tons of great TV content. How did GeoCities work? Did you have to like buy something from them? Stare, that was from a time when people were genuinely like optimistic. About the, the, the internet, yeah. I bet right. you somebody right. just believed in GeoCities. Yeah. I bet the internet used to have a future, man. <laughs> You're right. We kind of peaked. Now it's just us. The internet peaked like in 2007-ish. Anything after that is just no bueno. Yeah. No, dude. It, 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 okay. Seven, seven. Oh, Facebook wasn't a thing. It started as a thing, but only for colleges. It wasn't huge. Uh-huh. Maybe it was in the cities. And, but MySpace was there. But MySpace was not a Facebook. It's not like a nuclear bomb. It would have happened anyway situation because MySpace was just kind of cute, but yeah. it wanted to ruin the world. My, you know what I yeah. Mean? MySpace was too, you know, whimsical. Yeah. Yeah. There was yeah. never going to be a scenario where MySpace was spreading like, Russian propaganda all over your grandpa's page. <laughs> oh, he just inspired a pretty good fanfic for me. Like, you uh, were never going to see Tom from MySpace. Tom. Yeah, you were never going to see Tom from MySpace at, like, a Senate hearing. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I mean, if he was there, it'd be, like, a Senate hearing about how log boards are totally chill. <laughs> but on the other side, we never would have gotten the social network, which is a dope movie. The only oh, yeah, that was a good movie. I would say it's uh, one of a few, uh, pun intended, good Aaron Sorkin movies. Yeah, Aaron Sorkin, that's a name you hear a lot of, and I always try to pretend I'm as educated as everybody else. Uh, a few good men was the reference singer. I was making. Wedding singer? He, no, he didn't do Wedding Singer. I don't think. No, I mean the play, the the play adaptation. I saw it at my community theater. Oh, okay. A long time ago. I think he wrote Wedding Singer. No, it was a few good men. Yeah. Safe theater, different play. Yeah, you, you were there. <laughs> Fuck. He did. He sorry. did a few good men. I'm sorry for this podcast. He did the you know West Wing. Did a few good men. Your mom. Oh, who was that too, Stairmaster? Yeah, which mother are you speaking of? Hey, Stair. Actually, I thought I had uh, coronavirus the other week. Oh, I couldn't fuck. taste anything. I couldn't taste anything, and I was freaking out because that's like one of the symptoms. Uh-huh. But it turns out. I remembered. I was just eating your mom's bland ass fucking lasagna, and that's why oh, I can't taste no. anything. <laughs> if she can't make a lasagna, worth a damn. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Stairmaster. I was just, I was just, I just had to get stare. That's what they honest. call a bap, bland ass pasta. Shut <laughs> <laughs> the fuck up! You are under arrest. Oh my god, dude, that's like a fucking double slam junk. Also, I'm reading the Wikipedia article for GeoCities, and this is blowing my mind. Hey, tune back in. Or wait, is this part of the show? Okay, bring it back to us, man. What are you learning? Yeah. They had, in the original form, City used to select a city in which to place Swanson, Stairmaster has been at the GeoCities page on Wikipedia for some time. I think we got to send a man in after him. <laughs> He's the lost cities the are 90s named now. after real cities or regions according to their content. For example, computer-related sites were placed in Silicon Valley, and those dealing with entertainment were assigned to Hollywood. Oh, no, I By said Swanson did have to GeoCities. stare And now he's reading it, too. By 1999, GeoCities had additional neighborhoods and refocused existing neighborhoods, such as Augusta for golf. Wait, or, they had oh, actual neighborhoods? Yeah, like what? I don't remember this shit? at all. Yeah, Hollywood and Hills, films and actors, uh, Capitol Hill, politics and government... 
Did GeoCities like change at some point from <laughs> when it started to when we were all on the internet? They're asking too many questions. Pull them back. Tokyo, Pull them back. They're going too deep. Related topics, including anime. West Hollywood, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender topics. South Beach and Marina, a high style hotspot for hanging out, meeting, greeting, seeing, and being seen. Okay, listen. What the fuck uh, does that even mean for a website? Who is a safe okay. person? I've got a take on this. You know, Sorry. it's it's popular and easy to be cynical when you're talking about like looking back on GeoCities, but honestly, the way I, I Stairmaster just described yeah. that sounds cool as shit. <laughs> Yeah, it was incredible. That's what I'm saying, guys. The internet was genuine back then. Someone would have made GeoCities because they believed in GeoCities and the internet. Oh, yeah. We're never going to have that ever again. Ever again. With anything, probably. Yeah. It was crazy, the late 90s and GeoCities and the fucking trying to find the Triforce in Ocarina of Time and shit, man. Anyway, it's that's like, at uh, TV Tuners on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, you can also find us in Angel Fire. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you can find our blog... Yeah. Uh, tune the speakers down a little bit before you click on it, though, because there's some, like, trash-ass middies on there. Yeah, we're playing some Lincoln Park <laughs> up in that. <laughs> we're playing Coldplay Clocks. <laughs> At the same time, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we have, like, one of those YouTube double players playing, and it plays both of them at the same, at the same time. That would, like, activate people. <laughs> that's how the CIA wakes them up. Yeah, it, that's, that how, that's how Winter Soldier got woken up in Captain America, man. Like, you also <laughs> saw a GIF of a skeleton playing a horn. And that's what ruined the internet. Because I did it all at once, and they uh, like activated the siren scream of Apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. And that's how it goes, buddy. You can also use the hashtag TV tuners, and we'll give a glance at what you're saying. Correct. Uh, and with all that, why don't we get to the Tweet of the Week, huh, Star? Oh, uh, Tweet of the Week, yes. This Tweet of the Week comes from user at Southland Socks. I'm already laboring through Fargo because Chris Rock is starring in it, but even he won't compel me to watch SNL. Sad! Nice. That's a quality tweet right there. Because <laughs> no one should compel you to watch SNL. I like the Trumpian syntax. Yeah. Why would Chris Rock inspire one to watch SNL? He's on the season premiere that's airing as oh. we record, actually. Wow. And as we're recording, our president is dying. This might be the last TV tuners of the Trump administration. Well, yeah. Maybe mark the day. Maybe. Well, no, you got that anime thing, I think. You guys forgot about it, but it's like... Uh, you'll be dead thing? by then. Yikes. That's my Ooh. bet. Okay. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll find to, out we'll the report. To... <laughs> We'll have to take I'm, off the bleach cast for morning. Imagine making like a TV podcast during something like that happening. <laughs> we give a shit. Like we just like, <laughs> yeah, like someone slips Stairmaster a note and Stairmaster's like, I regret to inform you. President Donald, Donald J. I Trump. Wish, I wish we could do live shows. That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, when the virus is over, we still won't. Oh, it's at TV tuners, by the way. Ooh, That's right. That's yeah. true. Uh, I'm going to yeah. give this a tune in because I agree. Uh, I'm going to give it a tune in. Uh, yeah. With Chris Rock in it. Yeah. Chris Rock is, yeah. We'll get, you know, we'll get to our thoughts on Chris Rock in this, uh, this episode, this, this program, but no, it's true. He can't compel me to watch SNL. Sad. Uh, I, need, I need some context from you guys before I give an official rank. But, uh, when I first heard him, I thought he said, it's not going to inspire me to watch SNL. Like, but I, th I was thinking, like, who gives a shit? Nobody's going to watch SNL. That's just, like, a, a pre-ironic dunk or whatever. But is he actually genuinely telling the world that it doesn't make him give a shit about watching SNL? I think or so. Or is he, like, being snarky? You think so? I think he's saying I gotta that, like... I got to give him the tune in. I got to give him the tune in, because that's genuine. Yeah. It's genuine. That's from the heart. I think, being, in, baby. I think it's genuine right there. I think it's closer to yeah. the heart. Yeah. It's closer to the heart, dude. <laughs> you just started listening to Rush last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, Dude, you, gotta you are working 12. it through the seventies, my man. Oh, yeah. love, love to hear it. Let's man, just hope Stern never like, gets to the Eagles. Rush, God bless the Eagles, but Rush number one band to have while playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's just to have it on in the background. Yeah, I mean. that's true. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's a tune in. Congratulations, Southland Sox. Now, Stern, did you pick what? this guy because he has one of the names of your cats? <laughs> no, I didn't even think of that until I. So he said that. Well, double tune in. That's the highest rank a twit ever got, huh? Yeah. 
It'll never happen again. Yeah, Shit, they broke the fucking meter because it got a four out of three. Like you can't even read the meter anymore for the next one. <laughs> no, yeah, we, yeah. We might as well just never do the segment ever again. Like your grandpa's uh, like holding a wrench and he looks down. And he's like, "There's nothing I can do about uh, it." Oh, that'd be very convenient <laughs> if we stopped doing that. Yeah, a little too convenient. <laughs> Why don't you start doing Instagram of the week, or you just ask a motherfucker like, "Open your window." Well, if I did like, Instagram hey. of the week, it would just be random hot chicks. Yeah. Also, we would have to have an. Interview. I don't want to hear it, Stairmaster, like describing hot chicks. Right <laughs> no offense, my man. I don't think that's not it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to listen to that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of like heavy sweaty. breathing. <laughs> Swanson's like that. I just wanted to start a TV podcast. Stair, just Stairmaster being like this lady. She's got big boobs. <laughs> They're round. <laughs> I'd be like, Stairmaster, this is a uh, this is like a fighter jet someone drew as a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Do not put that in the show notes. Well, if it was a train that someone drew as a lady, stand stand uh. back. Uh, but isn't a train so inherently phallic? Like, how would one draw? Actually, no, that, don't answer that question. Oh, it'd yeah. be as a fin boy, obviously. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's the tweet of the week. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the rabble, huh? Yes, rabble, yeah. rabble, rabble, rabble. Yeah. That's that's what we say here. We're no burglars <laughs> of ham or otherwise. I, I, oh, I got gotcha. you. Um, uh, yeah. So the rabble here. This is where we talk about. Are you saying you wanted to steal a ham though? Because like, I'm sorry, that's some pretty wimp shit. If you wanted to steal a ham, I don't know. I, I feel like whoever has a ham is usually going to like eat it. What if someone left it on like an open window sill to cool, and you were walking by? Ooh, yeah, I, would I would have to. That. I would have to steal that. Yeah. Like it's so obvious. Are. I mean, in this day and age, that'd be like a sign from God. It's yeah. like so have, not only- ham, my yeah. son. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, how man, often? Yes, you just turned it around on me, man. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because no one's putting their stuff out to cool on this on the window sill anymore. <laughs> so it's a trap. It might be. That's the that's the problem. You, that's the problem. You know, you gotta be careful. Like, it might be a trap. Like someone's gonna yeah, hunt you for sport if you do that. Like yeah. surviving the game. Ah uh, yes, he has taken the hand. The game uh, begins. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Busey Gary Busey steps in. It's like, listen, that ham contained a tracking chip. <laughs> and we you, just ate, you just ate that tracking ham. <laughs> now we're gonna hunt you down. Why Gary You're, Busey, or is it? Oh, because, because I just laughed at that part. Because that's from Surviving the Game, yeah. Yeah, he, he was in Surviving, surviving the, the Game, game. with Ice, what, Ice Cube. Was, Ice was that the documentary about spending a year on tour with no. Chicago rapper The Game? No. Oh, okay. No. It, 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 I must have been watching, like, YouTube or something. It was the most dangerous game, but for some reason, Gary Busey's hunting Ice-T. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Gary Busey's the first guy to go in that movie. Oh, that's right, yeah. Whoa! It's, a uh, it's, a. Uh... Was it the guy from Blade Runner? Rucker Hauer? Yeah, Rutger Hauer is a bad guy of the film. All right, I, I guess it's cool. movies like that. They're going to call the fucking Denver PD on us, bros. <laughs> that's what they're like around here in Denver. Yeah, Gio, how's it feel to be uh, uh, coming into Denver? Oh, you know, I, I made sure to show up yesterday to acclimate. Yeah, you enjoy the Mile High yeah, actually, city? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. Your friend kind of seems like a cop swats him. I'm liking it here, man. The mountains are beautiful. The, uh... Local grocery store has an excellent like raspberry donut. It's even though it's a chain grocery store. <laughs> yeah, it's the one grocery really store that. in Denver. No, it's oh. King Supers, man. They yes. got that spicy fried chicken. Like most grocery stores, any grocery store worth a damn has delicious fried chicken. Obviously, uh, but King Supers goes a step. Whoa. Well, is it worth a damn then? Because that's the fucking yeah. defining part of what I just said. So, what grocery store worth a damn does not have good fried chicken, Stairmaster? Uh, I think like Butera. I don't know what the fuck a Butera is, but they ain't worth a damn if they yeah, don't, I don't have good know. I don't know about that. I can I, I can yeah. tell you on the East Coast, or at least in Pennsylvania, uh, we got we we had uh, that giant eagle. They got the, they got a good fried. Nice pass tense catch. I, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, Pennsylvania here is very proud of their gas station food, which is like a weird sentence. But Wait, yeah. So you eat eagle at? You eat eagle in Pennsylvania? Is that what's going on here? Eat eagle? What? what do they call it? Yeah, what the fuck? We eat eagle? No, this is the, the grocery <laughs> store chain is just called Giant Eagle. Oh. They eat eagles out in Pennsylvania, I tell you. Whole eagles! <laughs> Someone's gotta stop them. 
<laughs> Stairmaster's like, man, I got to bring this up on the podcast that's to why, spread awareness. <laughs> that's why they're going extinct. Cruelty. All the Pennsylvanians are just fucking eating eagles. <laughs> Wait, hey, uh, is it cool? If, is it cool if I vape in here though? No. Maybe. No. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? No, Keo would say no, but uh, you know, I'm a cool guy. Yeah, I'm gonna say. But yeah. he's in hell right now. All right. All right. Thanks. Oh. Okay. That doesn't sound like oh, a vape, but I'll take your word based. for it. No, well, Swanson told me back in 2018 that vaping was just as bad as smoking. So, I mean, I, I figured if you would allow someone to vape, you know, I mean, you're morally consistent after all, aren't you, Swanson? That's true. That's what I always say is that I'm morally consistent. Yeah, yeah this is just a vape, though. It's just one of those weird new ones that looks like it's not a vape. It's 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 like some Space Age Metal Gear Solid 5 shit. It looks Metal like Gear Solid cigarette. V, I'm sorry. Not Metal Gear Solid 5, Metal Gear Solid V. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. the rabble is the segment here on the pod where we go through. Uh, we're doing a podcast. The, yeah, we're doing a podcast right That's now. That's what it's called. Let's keep it moving, then, baby. Let's get this uh, podcast load to the destination. The rabble here is where we talk about what uh, people around the the world, the the internet sphere, think about the show that we're watching this week. This week we're watching Fargo season four. And uh, we, we've got some some cri- some critical opinions, some IMDb reviews, uh, good and bad of both. So um, <laughs> I'll I'll go first, I guess, with the positive. All That's right, fine with everybody. Uh, so this first uh, this go. first review here is called uh, titled "Producers Hit One Out of the Park." Nice. Uh, it's an eight out of ten review by uh, J M C C R M C K six five one seven two. <laughs> Easy to remember. I think that might be the code to his luggage, but in terms of favorability, i.e., how good this show is, I refer the right honorable readers here to Better Call Saul and Killing Eve. It is Whoa. that good. The best Whoa. thing besides the really astute casting and brilliant directing is the dialogue between the black players. Sounds authentic <laughs> to me and really funny. All I know is I have to tune into FX to watch it. I Whoa. can't stream it at some other time, and I know <laughs> I won't be I won't being missing any episodes. Destined to be remembered. What the fuck is killing you? Well, he literally said tune in. What else? Like, yeah, I guess that's. <laughs> um, you said like Casablanca and Killing Eve. What is Killing Eve? I said better call Saul and Killing Eve. I was being metaphorical. I forgot the exact show, but I remember uh, it was Killing a great Eve one. is a I'm show that I haven't watched, but I've heard good things at least about the uh, first I think season. She's British. Yeah, it's a it's a British lady and the lady one of the ladies from Grey's Anatomy, and uh, they're like having a tit for tat, cat and mouse sort of game. One's an assassin, the other's an agent for MI five. So who's Eve and who's in it for the killing of the aforementioned? Uh, Eve is the agent who's tracking down the uh, skilled assassin. Uh, and they have like I guess they're like playing around with like whether or not they're in love with each other as well. well that's so fine. tune in or tune out. I don't know. I haven't watched it. Well, that's what I'm saying. But I've watched Better Call Saul. Anyways, it's Better Call Saul's a tune in all around. I that's think famously a mutual tune out by all of us. Uh, yeah, Better oh. Call Saul. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we hate oh, that hot show. Takes. Whoa. Hey, anyway, hey. um, my favorite part of this, my favorite part of this review is that uh, they claim that they can't stream it. When it's on Hulu, <laughs> just like for the taking. <laughs> yeah, I don't you know, know how it is. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, if you want to pay for cable instead of like the ten dollars it takes to get Hulu, go for it. Does, yeah. That guy has to know it's on streaming, or does he genuinely not know it's on? I gotta stop asking these questions about people on the internet. I don't know. All I know is two out of eight found this helpful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my review is on the other end of the spectrum. That's a 250. From user Grand Q, who says, okay. Say goodbye to Fargo. The season okay. one of Fargo was excellent. The second, a masterpiece of humor and drama. drama. The third, passable. And the fourth, present, the present fourth, absolutely unforgivable because it soaked in woke ideology. Oh, God. That is how that sentence goes. Ideology so and... Sh- Soaked in a woke ideology. Because yeah, choked. Dipped. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the Shut way the soaked, fuck up. 
Ideology and show business are a bad mix and don't give the best results. Unfortunately, we can't see the end of this new cultural form of ideological absolutism. Say goodbye to the great, great show that was Fargo Season 1 and 2. 13 out of 18 found this helpful. Wow. Why can't they see the end of it? It's on Hulu. (laughs) No, they can't see the end of this new cultural form of ideological absolutism. It sounds like this is a uh, a why. Is it going to die or something? Or a way, maybe? It sounds like it's a way, which is uh, wet-ass ideology. (laughs) (laughs) Got him, dude. What is, what is this ideology this guy's talking about? It's the presence of black people? Apparently. Is that how far, is that how far our culture war is going? I guess. <laughs> what That's, the fuck? So we've um, recently on the pod, I think, four, well, this is the fifth time now. The I think four out of the five most recent shows have all had, had like prominent reviews. black or like, uh, <laughs> like female leads. And so always that shitty internet guy saying yeah. that kind of shit? Yeah, and all of them have this kind of shit Never in their show. IMDb Whoa. reviews. You think it turned out to all come from the same account, or at least same general location? I wish. Get... No, IMDb is just like a cesspool case. of, like, idiots. Is it actually Stairmaster putting on a mustache and just putting no, these takes not... out there so you guys have podcast I material? I cannot be racist. It's true. Stairmaster, uh, Stairmaster already completed his anti-racist training. It's sort of like the Levitico technique. <laughs> Only he just watches it's like, like yeah, he just watches like black cinema with his eyes what's forced soci- open. What's the socialist ideology within Fargo season four episode one? I doubt it's just the presence of black people they're talking about. Yeah, I mean everyone's kind of striving within a capitalistic system or whatever. If anything, an unregulated one thus far. Yeah. Maybe the real woke ideology for this one that they think is that they're treating Italians like they're like they're human. Yeah, that's what they think. They don't oh, like I that. Agree with that. I can't agree with complaining about that. Well, I cannot agree with that, but I guess you can't be <laughs> well, racist, according to you. So I don't know what I'll say about it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, if you're on TV tuners, you can't be racist no matter what you say. That's the like, TV because you physically guarantee. can, or because something horrible will happen. The again. universe will rewrite itself. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you type your password in, it spells it out. <laughs> All right, Gia. So you were uh, you got you got guest pick here. So you got to uh, you got to get the the critics reviews. Uh, the critics little blurbs on Rotten Tomatoes. What uh, what do you got for us? Oh, thank you, Swanson. It's an honor. So uh, David Bianchuli. Pardon me if I mispronounced that. From NPR says, Fargo, as in past seasons, manages to both be more dramatic and more comic than almost any other show on TV right now. Wow. He gave it a tomato. Is that dope or is that no? I'm pretty sure that's good. It sounds like it's well, a Well, is the tomato idea. rotten or not? No, oh, the rotten is like icon? a splat. <laughs> oh. Like a splat. I got one of those. I got one of those too, man. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, these aren't necessarily my words just remember i'm reading something here oh prepare so, for several slurs i mean i haven't read this yet because there's a lot of work to even find them but anyways uh oh. so roxana uh had had to be part of me if i mispronounce that from roger ebert.com says fargo has always been a little off kilter but those elements stand out as particularly indulgent or egregious this season when it's overall storytelling approach is so uneven uh, that's a green star looking icon. Yeah, that's that. that's what they call a splat. And I don't know if they actually call it that or if I just said it, made it up, but <laughs> You're in charge of it's, you, it's, it's just it's a good idea. They hear it and they immediately hire you on the spot to redesign hey, the there, website. Actually I'm scrolling up to find out and the banner is just Swanson's face going, It's a splat with a quote <laughs> on it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, well, I guess he'd be shrugging. Actually, he would be. He'd be like, "Yeah, it's a splat." If the Rotten Tomatoes people are listening, I am going to say that it's probably not a good idea to hire me to do your web design, but it is a good idea to hire me to do like blurbs where I'm just saying it's a splat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tomato, you guys hear it? like a you guys push hear quote. The... <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys hear what the TV tutors guys are doing these days? Oh, they got a band. They're just doing back of the box quotes <laughs> for DVD releases. I hear Stairmasters on the back of the cereal box. <laughs> tastes like oats. Stairmaster. And you're like, I don't know what oats taste like. What have I become? 
<laughs> if he had his stu- straight line and all the heroin. Oh, hey, oh, well, I don't know about. Mm, I don't like that part of this. But, mm. All right. Pull well, up. listen. That's uh, that's it for the rabble. Stick around yeah. near the end of the pod. Here, we're going to be talking about Fargo season four and giving you the official oh. TV tuners opinion. What could all it be? Right. Let's get to uh, what you guys watched this week. Anything fun, interesting? Oh, oh God. I watched uh, Undisputed 2, Last Man Standing, starring Michael Jai White, or Jai White and uh, Scott Adkins. Is this the one where Adkins goes to prison? No, this is the one where Jai White goes to prison. Oh, okay. And Adkins plays Boyka, the oh, strongest right. man okay. in the prison who wants to be the one, world's most complete martial artist. Huh. And then, like, the sequels are all about him instead of Michael Jai White. Yeah, because in the first one, it's Ving Rhames playing a boxer, George Eitzman Chambers, who's in, going to prison because of being charged with rape. And you think, mm-hmm. oh, it must have been framed since this is the protagonist. But no, then you get to see a testimony from the victim. Uh, it's Ving Rhames talking to the film audience in this weird dreamlike state. And then and then you realize that, that uh, Wesley Snipes... The playing the prisoner who's already the boxing champ at the prison is the actual protagonist. And then we get to see him murdering a guy and his wife for having an affair on him. Have you been describing the same movie continuously this whole time? No, I was talking about Undisputed One. Right. A different guy goes to prison and boxes so, movie because the guy already in prison is a good guy in that one. So whoever wins this boxing tournament emerges as the eponymous Last Man Standing. So the title's like Last Man Standing. And this one, yes. Gotta find out. Okay, so that's the crazy thing. It's the same character from the first one, the Ving Rhames character. But he's retroactively, he's a good... Ving Rhames is in the first film, and this one is Jai White. Yeah, but like, what do I know? Finger Rams from that's not Marcellus. Oh, uh, he was in Dawn of yeah, he was Marcellus Wallace. Oh wow, that's and a, he was also wow. in the Dawn of the Dead remake. Good, no, he's still out there doing shit. Also, he's Dawn a the guy in Mission dude, Impossible. Right. Dude, <laughs> check out. Do you like work for Ving Rams? That's yes. incredible. You're Ving Rams. <laughs> I am his manager. That's great, man. That's how that's I can great. afford to keep this TV tuner studio running. Oh. Yeah, it's nice in here. I noticed you got hardwood floors, hearing bones, yes. pattern. Uh, genuine windows, not fake windows. It's a nice little, it's a nice little studio you got here up in Denver. So, totally missing some green chili from Pete's Kitchen on Colfax Avenue. Am I right, fellas? Yes. So Undisputed Two is weird because it's the same character from the first one, except this time he's a good guy. He gets framed by the Russian mafia. They put a bunch of cocaine in his hotel room and get him sent to prison so they can have him fight Boyka and rig the because they want to rig the bets. Interesting. Sounds pretty good. Is it well, good? Yes, he's looks like surprising amount of pathos. The fights are great. Jai White it's gets crucified man. at one no. point. All right. <laughs> find the time to watch this one, man. This sounds pretty dope. There's also a Russian guy in a wheelchair who teaches him how to actually do MMA because he's a boxer. And Boyka is trying to be the world's most complete martial artist. So Michael J. White plays the character that Ving Rhames played in the first movie. Yes, and in the first movie, that character was a rapist, but in this movie, you're supposed to root for him. I think just because they changed the actor. And, and then, yes, and then movie after this, Boyka is a hero. And So there's um, a third movie? Yes, there is. I haven't seen it. Holy cow. Now, I have a question here, Stair. Now, uh... Michael J. White, especially in 2006, was way younger than Oh, he was very Rames. Yes, he's also... Yes, he's in such great shape in this movie, by the way. Absolute oh. physical special man. So they don't do anything with the fact that this is a sequel, which takes place, I guess, no. after? No! You could have just changed the names of the characters. Yeah. You could have just and, been a different boxer entirely. And nothing without the fact that Michael J. White looks, one, nothing like Ving Rhames, and two, is younger than Ving Rhames. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a different sort of impression to him as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sure. You guys do. So you that's know a tune in. Sure. <laughs> okay. People um, get shot in the face in that movie. I don't know. I have to remember that. I also saw but... Wolf Warrior. Oh, okay. Wolf Warrior. Yes, which was a Chinese action fil- thriller. From does he a... does he fight wolves or is he? A wolf? Yes, actually. There is a scene where they're doing a military man exercise. Man fight a wolf, dude. But they're, just... but they're like in the woods at night, and then a bunch of wolves circle them, and they don't have real live ammunition because it's a military exercise. 
So they have to use martial arts to beat up the wolves, and then they fasten bayonets and stab the wolves. Wow. And so one of them this, sets a wolf on fire. How's this chart in the grand history and canon of movies where dude fights wolf? Oh, this, this is pretty badass. Yeah, this definitely sounds Funny. better than yeah, that Scott movie Adkins where Liam Neeson fights wolves. Scott Top Atkins the plays the Amer- Yeah, Scott Atkins plays the disillusioned British private mercenary who uh, the Chinese guy had to fight at the end. Yeah, is this like, a Chinese no, film? Yes, this is propaganda for the PRC. What's this movie? Oh, yeah, a, what's the movie where Liam Neeson fights wolves? It sounds better than this. Sounds that's better in than the that. cold. It's not. No, I just said it's in the cold, but I don't. No, know. it's like the night. It's like the night Liam Neeson fought twelve wolves or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! It's called. I think it's like, yeah. In the night. Oh man. No. The white. The white, maybe. Oh. I don't know. No, I, I got, fellas, I looked it up. It's called World War Three. Colin, World War Three was actually just Liam Neeson fighting these eight or ten wolves. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, agreed. It's, and it's got a splat on it, which is weird. <laughs> what? The weirdest part when he was doing promotion... <laughs> Mixed signals. The, the weirdest part when he was doing promotion for that movie was the interview he gave where he said he was just looking around for wolves. Just looking for a wolf to kill. <laughs> Where'd he go uh, looking? I guess the woods. And that would really that would be a terrible situation to be in. I just want to say, oh, it was the gray. I think. Oh, that makes yes. sense. I'm just, yeah. I'm just imagining him saying that, but like he's in a state without wolves and he doesn't know it, so he's just like walking in the woods of Illinois for like 17 years and he never finds a fucking wolf. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's a story there. <laughs> There's a story they could put in World War Four. Wait, hold on. The gray with Liam Neeson the gray. fighting yeah, the it's wolves the gray. was it is the produced gray. by Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, I didn't. What the fuck? Dude, Ridley Scott, that to, name shows up in the funniest places. Yeah, Ridley Scott just gets up to some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, that. All right, I'm so he did Alien right too? now. Yeah, not only did he, yeah, he did Alien. He did not do Alien too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> no, he got me. <laughs> uh, oh, hot fam- take here. Tony Scott was the better director of the two brothers. Ooh, uh, the two brothers. Yes, Ridley Scott and Tony Scott were brothers. What's Tony, Tony Scott done? He was the guy that, who directed Top Gun. Did he do uh, Schwarzenegger Gun. Mars movie? No, he directed Top Gun. Uh, is Top Gun, like, legit good? Because I haven't yes. seen it. But... Top Gun's like... alright. Me finding two hours to watch a movie is, like, the biggest fucking mountain to move in the world. So if I do that and Top Gun sucks, I'm going to be... Oh, you're going to be pissed? I'm not going to be pissed. Gonna be I'm gonna just going to be... I'm just going to be huh? sad, bro. I'm just going to be sad, man. I'm going to be like, oh, man, I really... I really looked forward Top Gun to this is good in the way movie. that Point Break is good, which is that you have to understand going in that you need to be on the same wavelength as this film. Oh, he Otherwise... directed Crimson Tide. What's that? What's the that? Last Boy Scout. <laughs> oh, the Last Boy Scout. It's... Okay. The Days of Thunder. Is Point Break the Sideshow Bob one? <laughs> no, that's Cape Fear. Yeah. Cape Fear. Why do I mix those names up? I don't know either. Point Cape. Point Break is uh, the one with Johnny Utah. Should I see that before? Because I haven't seen it yet, so now which one do I watch first? Whatever dumb shit we were just you talking about. You watch Point Break shit. because it's got Gary Busey in it. Yeah. What were we comparing it to? I don't know. Keep moving, boys. This truck's got to keep moving to podcast. Oh, you're now. comparing it to Cape Fear. Oh, so Cape, Cape Fear, Top Gun, which first? I don't. What does Cape Fear have to do with anything? Because you said I should fucking watch Top Gun, and now you're saying I should fucking watch Cape Fear. I never Jesus, said Jesus, I can only watch one fucking movie at once. Watch Point. Go watch Point Break. Point Cape. Point Break. Shit. Point Break. I'll watch one of them. I'll watch Point Break <laughs> or Cape Fear, whichever one I remember to watch. But Cape Fear has Robert De Niro. Yeah, but Robert this, De Niro. this has Gary Busey and, pa- and Patrick Swayze in his like best <laughs> okay. film role. Have you guys? Have you guys seen like that first Scorsese De Niro movie? It was like. It's kind of low budget, but it's like awesome. I think it was his first feature film. No, no. fuck, I can't remember, yes. but probably God not. It. Listen, it's pretty good. I just watched it for the first time. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, Scorsese's first film was Taxi Driver. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just like Keanu. That's an excellent film, dude. I'm just like Keanu shooting the gun in the air right now. Ah! He shot a gun in air. Yes, it's fairly iconic. You mean stopping the bullets? No, no, no. He shoots a gun into the air because he can't bring himself to kill the guy he's pursuing. pursuing. Oh, I thought you were still talking about the Matrix. No. You know, I kind of feel like uh, 
Travis Bickle sometimes when I'm doing the $10 oh, thing geek here in TV Tuners oh, because dear. you never know what you're going to get with uh, with the with the co-host here on TV Tuners. Sometimes I got to clean up the blood. Sometimes I got to clean up the bad bits. Uh, I'm sorry. Old Ed Swanson freaked out. All right, I'll keep it on track. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've uh, I've been watching Lovecraft Country, getting back into that. Oh, uh, did they solve racism? Uh, no. Distinct. It turns out racism's still happening. <laughs> Fuck. It's a bummer. Uh, the show's odd. Um, and I'm. Yes. It sounds like I'm saying that in a way that's like bad. It's odd in like a Twin Peaks way, where it just sort of the oddness is baked into the concept. Um, all of the acting all around is awesome. The second episode is when Michael K. Williams gets in there, so you know the shit's good. Um, the story is, you sort of just gotta roll with this one, I think, because I, I feel like by the end of the season, maybe it makes a bit more sense, but right now it's sort of just like, huh, okay, that happened. Interesting. So, so ultimately, still a strong tune-in? I would say a pretty strong tune-in, yeah. Um, also, it's cool, a it's a very odd for an HBO show to do this, but it's a kind of an episodic show. Oh, in a way that I wasn't expecting. Well, what do you, What do you mean by that? Because I, I feel like a lot of their shows, the episodes are full stories. Well, I mean uh, more that like it, there's an overarching narrative, sure, but each episode sort of has its own little like one and done bit going on. Like there's oh, okay, like shows used to be. Yeah, exactly. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha you. Now. Disaster. So it's so it's like shows used to be, but HBO shows are almost never like that. <laughs> okay, I got gotcha. you. No, you're totally right. Yeah, I haven't noticed that. So yeah, or more like books or something. Something interesting to think about. What should yeah. think about? Best wishes. Anything? Uh, anything you watch? They want to talk about to you? Uh, based on your guys's um. What is it? Twenty eighteen pick of the year. I watched the boys, and I was pretty amazed. It was a pretty great show. The honestly. boys. I'm like the boys. The boys. I'm like, give me a good one, guys. How'd you used to the do boys? It? <laughs> That's tight. No, it's a pretty good show. I thought it was amazing, and then I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. I thought like season one was incredible, and then the closing was kind of sloppy. And now it's kind of season two, and it's still pretty good. But I also don't care. So I'm glad when oh. I'll be caught up. Okay. Yeah, but it was really fucking incredible for like a lot of season one. Wait, so when did it, what's the drop off? I don't know. Honestly, I'm trying to build this door, and I think the door still not being complete was the drop off. Where I'm like, man. So maybe it's not the boys season two that's the problem. Maybe it's my miscalculations in door building. Uh, mm, that'll uh, do okay. it. Yeah. My mm-hmm. suggestion is that you blow the is that you blow the fucking doors off. That's, that's not going to get them to a deer square within a frame. That's the name of the episode of an episode on The Boys Season 2. I, Holy it might just shit, be, Swanson! It might just be blow it. the doors off. I don't remember. All right, so uh, that's it for what, we, what we'll what watch this week. Let's go move on to uh, the news, huh? And speaking of The Boys, Amazon has uh, is all in on The Boys Basket, which is what I'm calling the future of The Boys. <laughs> Is that for Easter or Christmas? Uh, it's sort of a, a you get it twice a year. It's a bi it's a biannual. <laughs> what? You, no, it's Easter. It's Easter. <laughs> you can get a Christmas basket, Starmaster. I would not be excited to get a Christmas basket. No, it's like full of fruits and like chocolate and yeah. stuff. Oh, I only like chocolate. You don't like fruits? You ever eat them? No, that. You ever, a, have you I'm, ever had? I'm a, a gluttony boy. Have you ever ate a peach, man? Stare's just that robot from Never, Futurama dude. that was like the Roman Emperor. <laughs> I'm eating awesome. his robot. <laughs> you gotta take this boy out to the King Supers and get him some peaches. Just feed me an apple. Yeah. My apples are good, but there's a whole world beyond them, my friend. Uh, Amazon has already renewed the boys for a third season, and uh, with the second season doing huge numbers for Amazon, allegedly. Um, I say allegedly. Not because I don't believe them, but just because we never know the numbers for any streaming service. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazon's apparently all in on this uh, franchise because they're they just announced that they're uh, going to give the, the the people behind the boys an untitled spinoff about an exclusive college for young adult superheroes. <laughs> uh, so, 
So that's that's interesting, I guess. I'm uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of giving the side eye to this one because I'm not sure. But so I feel like any premise can be a good story if told correctly, but side projects usually honk. That'd be a that would be a movie. That'd be a movie I'd watch, not yeah. a TV series. I would watch. Okay, I would watch it under the conditions that it was uh, a bunch of superheroes doing like an old school like Animal House style. <laughs> dumb like college movie but it's also just a tv show where they're doing like horrible things because they don't yeah, realize yeah. that they're superheroes <laughs> well super powered <laughs> individuals i i would want to reserve my judgment until i watched it but i would say that and i would know that the show was gonna fucking suck yeah i don't know i'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt although um the show is being written by one of the main writers on the series so that that's something i guess um oh they got jeff yeah, they got Jeff. That's tight. I'm back in, baby. They actually got Craig. His name is Craig Rosenberg. <laughs> um, Why is that funny? <laughs> the, the, the official uh, deal here, according to this press release, is that it will be set at America's only college exclusively for young adult oh, superheroes. Oh. <laughs> wow. I thought you were just going to say the only college in America. Yeah. Uh, it, might be, come as a, it might come as a surprise to you guys, but the college is naturally uh, run by Vought. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like Eastern Indiana University or something. Oh. <laughs> I, w- I wonder if there's do they have like a football team with these superheroes? You think? We got like a basketball. I bet there's going to be a side arc for that. <laughs> so, Swanson, yeah. you are the baked guy that was in the pitch room for that meeting that's like, well, what if there's like a football team, man? And they just see the dollar signs rolling in. There's definitely like, yeah, they, pro- they definitely have like a football team that like no one really wants to yeah. play against, but. Like, they maim the other team every time they play against them. The content is infinite, just like the pitch of the boys itself. It's like a self-referential Ouroboros of, like, a concept, you know? Yeah. Mayhaps. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be... We'll, I'll be interested to see. I'm always a little skeptical when a streaming service or a network gets 100% behind a show. You but, gotta uh, push those chips in sometimes, man. Yeah. We'll see. You gotta push them in. Um, That's a lot to win. Speaking of people who, speaking of the opposite of a hundred percent, a hundred percent behind a show, let's talk about cops. <laughs> uh, in our current sort of ecosystem, in, in our sort of environment currently, uh, the show Cops hasn't been faring super well. Uh, it turns out it only yeah. took us twenty years of it being on the air before we realized that maybe it set a bad example. So when did you guys know that the show cop sucked? Because I know the specific moment for me. Um, I like the. I guess this in- this in- implies that I like actively thought and remembered the show cops for. No, like if you were ten years old and cops was on TV, you were watching it and paying attention, right? Twelve years old, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I was paying attention, if you were cursing, but it was on TV. Cha- if you're surfing on TV without internet and without cable and cops was on you just stop there it's not great but it's acceptable you know what i mean i was more of a spike's wildest things caught on tape sort of guy when i was like 10 or 12 i saw an episode of cops where the cop arrested this elderly man with cancer for one grand marijuana possession and the guy was begging to not be arrested because it's only like medicine because he's dying of cancer and he's 80 and the cop was like sorry gotta bring you in gotta bring you in (laughs) there's no there's nothing i can do and i was like yeah, I was like twelve, and I'm like, this, this show fucking, this whole thing sucks. Like, oh, yeah. fuck that show. <laughs> no, I don't know if I ever had a show, moment because it was it actually kind of woke me. I don't know if I ever had a one moment where I was watching Cops and I was like, this whole thing sucks. But uh, I also yeah, wasn't like this guy actively watching Cops. Yeah, I think I stopped watching. I was, you guys are painting me as some kind of cops fan. I'm saying it's fucking 97. It's fucking 2001. You don't have cable television. The internet's down. You're uh-huh. surfing over the air television. If cops is on, and you're you're gonna fucking watch it. That's a watch. I'm saying like, post 97. I don't think I was watching cops. Like cops Same wasn't right. on Fox anymore at that point. It was on. I'm like, more Spike likely TV. to watch like world's wildest police videos. Cops Same is always Sheriff on. John man. Burnell. Maybe this was well, like a not having. Maybe it's like a not having cable thing, but yeah. that shit was on. When like, when when Cops whatever. was on Spike TV, I wasn't watching. But you know what I was watching on yeah. Spike TV? That old game show that uh, Wipeout is make is pretty much now. You remember the, the Japanese game show that was 
uh, dubbed in English with like a, to make it a comedy show where oh, they do all those. That's like Tosh.0 era. What a strange part of history. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> ah, Robot Wars. But, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about Robot Wars on TLC? Yeah. That's what right. the fuck happened this whole time? <laughs> yeah, and not the name of that show that I can't remember. <laughs> Robot, it's Robot Wars, bro. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? Uh, because that was Cops. also aired on Spike TV at one point. Yeah. No, it was on like fucking TLC or some shit. It, no, was. it, was, on, like, it was on other channels. Public, it was on public television. If you're watching PBS at two in the fucking morning in like 2002, what? you might see some fucking robots. I each other. don't think Robot Wars was ever on PBS. That on sounds PBS. like way I'm too telling badass. You, I'm telling you, Stare, it was not on cable TV originally. It started on like a smaller television scale it's not like it's not like cable tv didn't invent robot wars man it's more beautiful and genuine and historic i feel like you're not finding it on pbs it though moment. if you're turning on pbs at like 2 a.m you're watching like doctor who from like 1972 uh, <laughs> maybe this shit was on the cops robot channel, wars man. is a robot competi- combat competition that was broadcast right. on british television from 1998 to 2000 that's pbs <laughs> That is true. It's, it's oh, wow. British PBS. Wow. It's British yeah. PBS, man. Actually, yeah. If you're turning I'm PBS you, on, I don't some think... Some things are real, Stairs. Some things are real. If you're turning PBS on at, like, 2 a.m., though, you're finding, like, old-school, like, Agatha Christie's Perot on TV. Oh, yeah, there. they would you're never just, share yeah. Robot Wars at 2 a.m. Yeah. Which is why, when it's Robot Wars, it's just like when you encounter the Knife Channel in the wild. It's like, shit, I got it. I gotta yeah. watch it. Yeah, oh. see, you, you guys have seen Knife, the Knife Show, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here's yeah, the thing. That, now that's a tuna. I don't know if either of you ever experienced this. This is a, a younger moment of my childhood, but I remember that there was a specific channel uh, in so the area awesome. where I lived where they had horse racing, and they would just show it. <laughs> and <I> would, <laughs> that sounds badass. It was cool. Like local, and, one, like local ones or what? Or like I don't know if it was local or, local or what, but it was just a channel well, that was showed. Was it like the Kentucky fucking Derby? Or was Did it like you play ten people around the it? dirt ring? Yeah, I think it was, it was four people to place thing. bets on. Did you engage there's... in a winning season? Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, God. I, uh, Sorry, yeah, Mom, pick I, me up. I was like, <laughs> I shouldn't hang around this. I was like five at the would've... time, so the only reason I watched it at all was because they have like cool little like colored numbers for each of the ones, uh, horses, so I could like pick a color that I liked and just be like, all right, I'm rooting for this one. Uh, so as for Cops itself, uh, four months ago it was canceled by the Paramount Network and dropped from pretty much every uh, American outlet that was running it, uh, rightly so. It only took us 20 some odd years. Um, but that's not the end of Cops as we know it, apparently. Because recently they've begun filming episodes again. <laughs> oh? Uh, reports are that... The show has been seen filming in its uh, one of its favorite sh- uh, stomping grounds, Spokane County, Washington. Is it? Um, like, have they historically filmed a lot there? Or yes. Are they just starting up here? Okay. Nope. Yeah, they've. Yes. Uh, well, well they as much as it's lying to us. Uh, apparently, they don't film in actual they in the actual that. city of Spokane because, and this is an actual thing that I read <laughs> that is uh, they they don't sp- they don't film in Spokane itself. Because uh, it's re- they're required to be licensed and to get written consent to show the participants. <laughs> sounds like a good rule. So it sounds like in a lot of places like- they don't have people's written consent to show them on the air. What? Oh, that's yeah. Wait, no, that's the thing. Why would anyone ever agree to being on cops? Like, what do you get? I guess it's true. Day, well, if you were like that, I could break these cops, guys. You could have gotten real famous and money yeah. off of that. The thing so is, why, why the, would- the thing that doesn't make sense about that is that sometimes. They blur them out. I guess it's uh, depending on what city they're shooting in. That's a good point. Man, you shouldn't just put that on television. <laughs> like... Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> well, what we should have said. Well, are going to do it again? Yeah. Oh, man. But are uh, they going to uh, put it on American television? No, it will not be anywhere stateside, apparently. Um, <laughs> Langley Productions, the studio that films the series, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. That's only the only thing they film. Is uh, oh is making these new episodes for uh, uh, off the air in the U.S. but on non-American markets, it's still going because they uh, they owe them some episodes through the contract stuff. Swanson, I gotta know what countries. Uh, I don't know if I have. I don't have like a list of the other. Uh, I don't know if it would be right for Swanson to say. I just wonder, you want to keep those... this a secret from Americans. It's one of those super wealthy ones with a few people, or is it? 
You know what I mean? I think oh, that'd, be, um, to, that'd be hilarious if it was Liechtenstein. I think <laughs> that there are definitely <laughs> other nations that would enjoy <laughs> watching the hilarity of oh, the U.S. Swanson police saying system. Israel. Swanson saying Israel confirmed. Remember when like America wasn't presented <laughs> like this to the world? <laughs> Mm, I don't because this because cops has been running since like 1990. So, but not in Lexington. Well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stare. I fumbled your call. Uh, it's fine. Uh, apparently, the show is be- is uh, internationally in the UK, Portugal, uh, Brazil, <laughs> Colombia, Australia, Japan, <laughs> India, Norway, oh, no. Sweden, Denmark. And, of course, Canada. I don't think hey. the Japanese should be watching cops. They're you know what they call... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going with your bit, dude. Keep trucking. I already forgot what it was. You, you <laughs> threw me off. I was going to say in France, they call it a cops with cheese. <laughs> cops oh, with like cheese. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> oh, man. Would have been a good bit. It's my so, opinion. yeah. I'm sorry. Um, whether or not, I guess they're just gonna show show all that and uh, let let those countries sort of just laugh at the hilarity of the the policing here and move Can on. Can you imagine if they filmed an episode at a riot? That'd be crazy. Yeah, I think they avoid that kind of stuff, given what Cowards. we talked about last time. Uh, which Geo, if you don't remember, uh, well, you weren't here, but yeah. if you don't, if you if you haven't haven't heard us talk about cops last time, they the they oh. deliberately leave out. Uh, the cops doing like clearly suspect illegal shit. <laughs> yeah, no. so the media launders the violence of the police. Who would have thunk it? I mean, of course they do, but also that is like triple super fucked up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like a lot of things in this. <laughs> like the show has been on the air long enough that there are definitely tapes of people being shot by the police that they have. <laughs> oh yeah, you mean it's been on for a week? Yeah. <laughs> hey yo. Yeah. Uh well you know what? That's that is it for the news. So why don't we take a quick second, get a break going here, and listen to some good ads. Uh, I made it up here to the mountains of Denver. And I I hope I can find Stairmaster here. He's he's taking huh? all the my bookie money huh? and Oh, it's Stair- Watson! Stairmaster! Uh, uh. I finally found you. And now, my winning season returns. <gasps> At my bookie. Does this mean you're doubling your first deposit? Yeah, you better believe it. It's gonna. It means I'm going to be sur- doing Survivor, Super Contest, and Squares. You're going to celebrate the NFL season with my money? That's right. At my bookie. Also, I'm going to shoot you with this gun. But what if I told you you have a chance of one hundred thousand in cash prizes? All you have to do is pick five NFL games against the spread. Well, I would say I'd have to sign up now and make my first deposit to get a dollar for dollar match, <laughs> and grab myself a free entry into the famed My Bookie Super Contest. But you'd never give me the money. The best part is, my bookie has thousands of bets to choose from, from the full NFL slated NBA playoffs. Look! Look! Look for a few more seconds while I run away. Wow, from live betting the championship futures? Jeez, it's like every play I could make, I couldn't want to make is waiting for me. Hey, you... Stairmaster, where are you going? Get back here! I'm going to use promo code TV Tuner to double my first deposit. It's a no-brainer, brainer, brainer. Looks like his winning season's beginning today. At my bookie. I'm on to you, Stare. <laughs> Great ad. That was awful. Well, I hate well, myself. S- Sorry, guys. I passed out. I think it's because of the oxygen up here. Oh, oh yeah. Sometimes the uh, the oxygen levels are a little rough. You gotta. That's why yeah. we have this little breathing mask. We sort of look like we're from the movie <laughs> Tenant in theaters now. Do not watch. Also, oh, you the have pandemic's to, over, so pass it yeah. this way, man. Let me put that mask on my face that you have previously put on your face instead of Buster's <laughs> face. <Yeah. laughs> That's what they do in Tenet, too, yeah. Wow, now I really wish I'd seen that movie. 
I haven't seen that movie either, and I would encourage no one to go in the theaters and watch it. Don't be a mad person. Oh, oh the new Nolan movie? Yeah. Yes. What a jackass. I want to see that movie. <laughs> I'm, obviously, I'm not gonna, but what a fucking jackass, dude. Like, And I love his movies. I know they're basic or whatever, but what a jackass. To do he that. didn't, Let's I don't think he ass. needed to push for his movie to be, to let, to be put in the theaters during a pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, like, or at least how soon is it going to be on streaming? Because if he does it within that... a week, I'll be like, that's cool, Nolan. All right, buddy, you have yours. No, you they, like six they're... months, that's fucked. The company is trying to make as much money as they can, so it's going to be out in theaters for, like, a long, long time. Until this should... line falls below this line on the chart. Yeah, he should have used that time. He should have used the delay to make his movie actually listenable to, you know, sound engineering. Yeah, there's apparently a bit here where, uh, once again, a Nolan movie has, like, unintelligible lines of dialogue because of the sound editing. Yeah, Tom remember... Hardy's just like... It was Dunkirk Nolan? Yeah. yeah. Dunkirk had incredible sound design, though. Incredible. Well, like, I'm you assuming see that in a Dolby theater. You see it at home, it ain't shit. You see it at home, it ain't shit. But you see it in a real good theater. With I did. I've only seen it in theater. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredible. assuming Nolan doesn't I mean, do the sound. the sound editing in his movies. Uh, or it's inconsistent. A lot of his movie parts seem consistent. I don't know, man. Like Inception, I saw that in theaters. The sound design was fucking incredible. The like, sound the bass, design and the like space. the mixing of the voices, I think, are two different things. I guess, yeah, I guess those voices are muddy sometimes, but that bass be hitting. True, the base the base do be hidden. The, um, as the kids say, it hit different. I guess I'll forgive voice uh, muddiness if that base be hidden. So no bad fellas. Oh. <laughs> Stairmaster won't. He's coming for you, bro. Speaking of stuff yeah. you want to speaking of stuff that's hidden different. Let's go to a yes. a new segment or not a new segment. Let's go to a segment near and dear to everybody's hearts. It's Trailer Blazers. <laughs> hit the theme, stare. <laughs> is this some frog rock shit? <laughs> yeah, this part of the mean no, stare. Is their second album. <laughs> mean stare in a jam band. <laughs> I'm loving it. Uh, you got more bars for me? No, no, no. It's yeah, Trailer Blazers that. time. Yeah, you gotta go to our con. Fuck you gotta go to our concerts when we can do that again. It's Trailer Blazers time. Is going on my stare So, uh. We got a trailer we're watching this week of a movie. Uh, what? Let me and let me just. I got two words for you guys. My wife. <laughs> it's a Halloween treat. Uh, what, it sounds like 2007, approximately. What are you talking about? Yeah, interesting. Uh, so we watched the trailer oh. for Borat Two, which is uh, the what f- twelve year sequel. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 12, tw- years, twelve years of Borat. <laughs> uh, oh, I got, as much as I like that, it was uh, it's uh, thirteen years. I think. Fuck! Well, I, I hit it! I hit it, dude! Two thousand seven! I fucking hit it! I sh- oh no, man! If only there was a way for me to like put a promo code on betting on that, I would hit that fucking date. Well, maybe who knows? You'd have to go to some sort of place to find that. No, what's going on with this shit that we were just talking about, though? Whatever. Well, Borat too, of course. Uh, the reason I, oh, yeah. I figured we could watch this is because there's no good TV trailers out this week. Uh, we love this segment. And also, uh, it harkens back to our very first episode of TV Tuners, where we did Sasha Baron Cohen's uh, Who is America, which was uh, Tune In. So is this going to be your first movie? Our fir- no, no, we're not going to watch this on the pod. We're not heathens. Absolutely not. <laughs> not unless it was made for television. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, what well, I wanted to listen to it, so you would have gave me a week off. What are your thoughts <laughs> on this trailer? Does this look does this look any good? Uh, it seems a bit incoherent. This seems more like a, a bridge version of the full movie than a yeah. trailer. Yeah, this is just trailer uh, is three yeah. minutes, by the way, which is unnecessary. It's too long. It's too long, man. You don't need to show me a bunch of bits no... from the movie. Where I, I, like, I know what I'm getting into when I watch Borat 2. Uh, you don't need to convince <laughs> me to fucking... But do you? Yeah, you actually 100% do. It yeah. was cool how he pranked Michael Pence. That's fun. I hope it's more than he just did like... Did that be on the news? When did he do that? He must have, but I don't know how he kept it from that being on the news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he threatened him. I, I guess because he was in a giant Trump <laughs> suit, it's kind of hard for... People to be like that was Sasha Baron Cohen. I don't know. 
Um, there is a fun bit here that I think is interesting, which is that they do acknowledge, of course, that he can't just go around dressed as Borat for the entire movie because people do know him. Uh, so he does a bunch of disguises, which is fun. <laughs> that is delightful and whimsical. Um, honestly, He's pretty self aware. You, you you hear Borat Two is coming out in twenty twenty, and you're like, oh, fuck. What, what, do I really need like Borat Two, the spy who shagged me? I don't need. <laughs> I don't need you to make a sequel to a movie that was like okay the first time around. <laughs> what you don't like Austin Powers? Well, the first one's good. I mean, the second one sucks. <laughs> Well, the second one's like the one where they, the penis-shaped sh- satellite, and the gag about <laughs> everyone trying to describe it. No, that's I the first one. The first good. one has that one too. And two, both good. Yeah. Uh, two is like iffy, and then the third one is li- is like trash garbage. Yeah, no. Uh, so maybe they'll follow that with this one. Borat three coming you know, in twenty twenty five. Borat three, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm. I'm kind of cautiously optimistic because Who Is America was funny. He managed to get some like surprisingly shocking stuff from people who <laughs> normally don't talk about. It was shit. incredibly popular. Like it made the mainstream big time when it came out. It was in the public conscious. Well, he did get someone. He did get someone fired. I think like a judge or something. So I think Sasha Baron Cohen should fight Eric Andre. I mean, hmm. it, it's funny you brought up Austin Powers because just like Austin Powers, that's a movie everybody fucking quoted to death for years. And yep. <laughs> yeah, that, it does. They do sort of trade in the same uh, lines. Although I think yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen might be a better, in terms of how he's like comedically kept doing his thing, better than Mike Myers. Like, there's no. Oh. I don't know. I guess I guess he has made movies that are sort of on par of Love Guru. That Bruno movie sucks. I don't think I've seen either of those. Bruno movie is just like him doing Borat, but it's a bunch of gay jokes. Oh, yeah, that seemed like a skip. I remember processing that. My brain was like, skip. Yeah. He also had that The Dictator yeah. movie, which was not good. So he tried to do the same thing twice, and it didn't work, so he's going back to the source. Yeah. Uh, um, on. It's interesting, you know. Uh, we'll see how Borat 2 plays out. Also, he has a. there's a bit here where uh, another reason... Another uh, thing to another thing to sort of gum up the work so he doesn't have to beat Borat for the entirety of a film uh, when everyone knows him is that he has a daughter that he's bringing along to gift to give to Michael Pence <laughs> so they can have this, the they can have this surrogate sort of do some of the crazy bits with some people. Was he bringing it her to Pence or Trump? I think he was bringing her to trump or pence that's what it seems to imply was, at the end i think it was trump but he ended up at a pence bit thing at the end yeah i don't know hard to say so uh swanson earlier asked you hear about borat coming out in 2020 and you get angry and i'm like no i just get depressingly unsurprised about borat in 2020 yeah. I'm like, yeah, well dude, that's the thing you sure. hear about borat coming out in 2020 <laughs> and you're like wow they're really doing yeah. borat too and then you watch this trailer and you're like oh i don't know i guess it could work America's not any smarter since Borat first the first came out. So I was like, we, we yeah, we've just gotten so post post absurd that Borat two has come back, and even though it's a big shining star in the sky, I'm looking at it and I'm like, of course that's fucking here, man. 2020 <laughs> keeps 2020 in. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I think I'm gonna give that a light tune in. Honestly, it's oh, it's rare that we actually tune in on the trailers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. It was three minutes long. It's an easy tune out for a trailer. Yeah, it's that, a tune out for I mean, it's, uh, Wait, are we tuned on the trailer or the prospect of seeing? The prospect of seeing it is usually what I do. Uh, I don't really give a shit, but I'll probably end up watching it and laugh at least six times, and that's a win. Yeah, yeah. I'll be forced to watch it again, please. Yeah. Oh shit, Keo does that to you guys? Yeah, he does. He makes us watch this stuff. <laughs> About specifically Borat movies, or like he hasn't done this in thirteen. No, years? Keo loves Borat. <laughs> Stay <laughs> Master sees Borat 2 trailer and he's like, oh shit, Keo's gonna come for me. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a good thing Keo like is dead in the ground <laughs> because otherwise he might rise from the grave and tell us that, uh, that death was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, there it goes! Home run, dude! Home run bit! Oh my god! Watch it fly away. That was beautiful. I'm, I'm glad to be part of that TV tuner's history. So yeah, um... That's it for Trailer Blazers. Let's move on 
to our main event this evening. We watched a show, and now we're going to talk about it and fill your ear holes with our knowledge. Mm, or we could talk about Undisputed 2 some more. Mm. Was that the one with the last man standing? That was Undisputed 2, Last Man Standing, starring Michael J. White. And, so should I see that before Cape and Fear? And Scott Atkins. Yeah, you should watch Undisputed 2 before you watch Cape Fear, before you watch Point Break. What if I start them both at the same time, but I play uh, one backwards from the ending to the beginning and put them on in, in two TVs in the same way? I think that would be fairly distracting. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, th- this week we uh, we head to uh, the Midwest for some Fargo, season four. Uh, the yes. anthology series this year uh, follows a, uh, a, a two crime syndicates as they vie control for uh, Kansas City. Chris Rock plays Lloyd Cannon, the head of a crime syndicate made up of black migrants fleeing the Jim Crow South, who uh, form up a contentious relationship with the Kansas City Mafia. Now, I do want to remind you all, this is based off a true story, which happened. That's right. What about the names? They, they, didn't, they didn't... Oh, they changed them all. Na- Oh, thank God! Thank God! Yeah, the, but in uh, in respect to the dead, the events are still unfold the same way. I can't argue with that. You gotta yeah. respect the dead. So, um, right off the bat, here, I think I'm gonna say that uh, it's definitely, I think, the slowest opening to a season of Fargo. <laughs> yeah, like the big shocking swerve wasn't even that shocking. Yeah. yeah, you know what, my friend, it kept reminding me of Gangs of New York, and now that you mention it, I think. Being a little too fucking long is one of them. Yeah, Gangs of New York is a really good movie that's maybe just a little too long. And that's <laughs> yeah, kind of what I felt. It's setting to be in, just like this show. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there's a, we're about, let's see, half of this episode, I think, roughly, is uh, set up. Which kind of makes sense when you look at the cast listing compared to other seasons. <laughs> it's kind of big. Yeah, it's a huge cast. Um, the main <laughs> cast itself features... Um, let's see here. Great cast. The last, the the main cast of this season of Fargo features 13 main cast members. Holy cow. Which is huge. Uh, Normal seasons of of Fargo have like five or six, I think. Yeah. So, uh, it makes sense for why there's a whole lot of, uh, backup here. But the real question is, did this backup, like... Did you find it fun? Were you in, like enjoying this, or were you sort of just staring at your watch? Well, we stuffed into the back of a trunk. Yes. <laughs> a little, Fargo, <laughs> little Fargo Season 1 reference. Actually, yeah, before we get into this, uh, we're watching Season yes, 4 here. thank and, you. And it is an anthology show, but there is, it, is yes. it takes place in an interconnected, sort of extended universe. Which is just so the now world. we shall begin our recap of Fargo season one through three. Wait, <laughs> I was, was just going to say Fargo season one inspired by anything or is... uh, the first the movie. Yes, that's right, and it's one of the best fucking American movies. It's true. <laughs> is that a bad take or what? I fucking love Fargo. I can watch that movie like once a week. I mean, it yeah, so good. Fargo's a good movie. The Coen Brothers are uh, one of the Coen Brothers' yeah. masterpieces. It is dripping with like atmosphere and like these long like set shots of just empty, desolate, depressing, like, northern Yukon Territory, Midwest roads with, like, nothing going on and just horns. And also extremely funny. Extremely funny. That is so... Man. You know, fuck Cape Fear, Point Break. I'm gonna watch... I'm gonna watch Fargo again. Yeah. Um, What a movie. So where did you guys come to on the series of Fargo? (laughs) Fuck you. I think Stair was the one who told me, hey, you should check out this Fargo shit, and then I, like, blew it off for years. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, by the time Swanson same. didn't do it, I didn't care anymore. Yeah. Yeah, same. I mean, like, it's hard to stand in the shadow of that movie, but I did really like season one. Yes, yeah, so I binged that, two. like, over the span of yeah. one weekend and Christmas times. But just like I was saying, Fargo, like, it, it's so desolate in Yukon territory. Like, it could take place on the fucking moon. So when uh-huh. season two is like it's it's still in the Midwest, that's all the same, right? No, <laughs> very different vibes. Like, and I wasn't there for the vibes because Fargo, at the end of the day, for me, is like a movie about like vibes and atmosphere and setting. And like, mm-hmm. when, once it loses that, I'm, I don't care if it's still Midwest wacky. Content. I didn't watch season three. Uh, so is that even more of a drop off point? Uh, season I three guess. is a uh, well for me. Season two is really good. Um, season three I, I believe is, you, but it, but to me, my brain's like. This isn't Fargo. Reject. You know, they should have called it, like, Kansas City Fun Cruise 7 or something. 
Like, you call something Fargo Season 2, I'm going to compare it to fucking Fargo. What can I not the do? The Eliminators. Uh, yeah. Season 3 is interesting. Um, it's, a, it's a step mm-hmm. down, but it does have some great acting. Uh, Jesse Plemons, a.k.a. Todd from Breaking Bad, is in, the, is in it doing some good in stuff. In Season 3? Yeah. yeah. That dude a, was it was already in Season 2, though. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I am thinking of Season 2. Season 3 has Ewan McGregor. <laughs> That's who I was thinking of. Uh, Ewan McGregor well, playing well, two yeah. roles as twin brothers. Yeah, don't fuck with me. Oh, was he good in that? That sounds like a pretty high concept acting job. Uh, yeah, he was. He was, I think, one of the best parts of that season. Uh, that's sh- that's like, great. Again, the season it's a little bit of a step down, season three, but it's still I would still recommend. Um, yeah, that's a tune in. Cool for me, yeah, though, the Fargo in. show is definitely different from the movie. Um, just because not only because it's an anthology show, but just because it has a very different directing style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, something I, that is, I, I agree with you. It's like why keep the name? But I guess because I gave it a shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess they just wanted to keep the the uh, spirit the same in the anthology. Also, it's uh, they all take place in the yeah. Midwest, which I guess they're just saying like all yes. Midwest is like Fargo. North Dakota is not Missouri. Dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, the farthest the, the farthest fucking the farthest they go <laughs> south is to Kansas City. So I guess they're not going completely. Oh, that is actually Kansas City's in Missouri, dude. I don't like it. Yeah. Kansas City? Make hey, good barbecue. It's a good town. That's where, yeah, that's where this season takes place in Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. So far away from Fargo. Yeah, oh, I don't know yeah. if they even mention, um, if they're even going to mention it's Fargo in this, time. but uh, Stairmaster probably didn't. There's a callback. Yeah. It's the chicks from Minnesota, which is almost North Dakota. That's the callback. Oh, yeah. Interestingly enough, um, Kansas City was mentioned in Fargo season two. Uh, the Kansas City really? Mafia was wow. mentioned. Oh, like specifically, like a plot link. So, uh, there's a character who I think shows up in season two, who's like semi prominent, who show, uh, is from the is sent from the Kansas City. Uh, whoever's yeah. running the Kansas City crime family. So does that like make you like the series more or less that they did? <laughs> Um, oh, I think it's like fun when it's not like a big thing that they're throwing in your face. Like this season isn't obviously about connecting two and four together at all. It's just like a fun little thing that makes the world feel connected. Uh, yeah, but it's so, I don't know, it's, it's like sequelism. It's, it's so prescribed. I don't know. I, I, it was nice when things could just stand on their fucking own. But there's no, just... like if I didn't bring that up, you wouldn't know about it. So it's not like a thing where they're throwing it in your face. Yeah. That's the thing yeah, I appreciate. Selling action figures or whatever. Yeah. Like, they're not being like, hey, this guy's here. Because the character who shows up in that isn't even in this because it's set so far in the past. Hey, you, got, you guys remember For Whom the Bell Tolls 2? <laughs> what? He's, isn't he already dead? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Shit that it always had fucking sequels until like 13 years ago. <laughs> For Whom the Bell Tolls again. Yeah. Revenge. Hey, Ernie. Ernie, Re- hey, Ernie we're going to need you to hook this up. We're going to need you to hook this up to the first book, Ernie. Thank you. <laughs> Like it, 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 it robs creativity. Or it, I don't know. I feel like it robs a degree of artistic freedom. The corporate obligation to do that with everything. The second one was all right. The third one is where it really got out of hand. Uh, for whom the bell keeps tolling. That was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one where he got the psychic powers. Yeah. The fourth one, they ran out of money. Right to VHS, and it's like that bell still tolling. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> that uh, that was a weird one just because it's a question. <laughs> <laughs> so is it? I, I, and it wasn't like philosophical. They just didn't fucking know when they were asking. Yeah, is that bell still tolling. <laughs> wow, well, they just gave up, huh? Yeah, it was actually surprisingly tight. <laughs> Plot twist. So um, we open up on this with uh, sort of the history of the Kansas City crime organization. Basically, uh, it started out with uh, the Hebrews. They had their own group until the Irish came in and fucked it all up. Um, There's a whole thing. There's a recurring bit here. Basically, it goes from the Hebrews were in control, then the Irish killed them and took control. And then the uh, the Italians killed the Irish and took control. And now Chris Rock's gang is getting involved. Um. That's pretty much the long and short of it. Although there's a little, there's fun little bits here where uh, there's apparently like a peace offering thing where the bosses trade their youngest sons to each other. Um, and this leads to in the first round, the uh, the Irish uh, killing the all the Hebrews and then uh, him the the oh. Irish guy making his son kill his, 
the Hebrew son. Pretty Swanson, brutal. If I may, if I may interject, I did I did notice during uh, perhaps the first massacre, the very Valentine's Day massacre vibes one. Mm. Uh, that's when I very that's when I first noticed the soundtrack because they really do keep like a lot of interesting choices with the soundtrack in this movie. Like during that movie when they were explaining that horrible atrocity to the adopted kid. Like any other TV show would be like, bum, 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 bum. but this one just had like one dude, one guy on a guitar with the distortion way up, just scraping notes like up and down the fretboard, like which I thought was a pretty cool soundtrack decision. You know what I mean? Like I noticed yeah. a lot about that throughout the episode. Were you guys like vibing on the soundtrack or picking any of that stuff up? I'll be honest, I was not. No. I'm dumb and didn't pay attention to the soundtrack. No, I will I say was, like, that too uh, dumb to pay attention to the show, so I paid attention to the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, I will say the show continues to do some fun, have some fun with the uh, the directing in this episode. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, there's a, the particular shot near the end when uh, spoilers Don Fada dies is pretty good. Um, yeah. Very unnerving, by the way, how he dies. You but, mean where he gets popped or where he gets dropped? Where, Which one? Uh, he gets dropped when he gets dropped. There were both very good sequences, though. Like, just him getting it, like... like yeah. It was almost realistic, because, you know, you never see it coming or whatever the fuck. But the like, thing that... Uh, not, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that scene, because I, I have Don't some Don't worry, thoughts. we already spoiled this show in, like, the first ten yeah, seconds of this the podcast. Yeah, podcast actually. off. Don't. Um, Do it. So, <laughs> it's... Uh, they The first go-around, the uh, the Irish man uh, makes his son kill the, the uh, Jewish son. And um, second time, uh, second time around, they do the, the the thing all over again. This time around, the uh, the Irish son, uh, despite not being the youngest, gets drafted again. There's a little seems to be a little hostility between the father and son, which leads to uh, uh-huh. son eventually killing his dad. Uh, which means that by the time we get to our current day, he's still alive, which makes him kind of an interesting character. We don't really get to spend a whole lot of time with, but. Uh. Yeah, I definitely missed a lot of the connections like that because I know they were writing a lot of them and I missed them a lot. So I'm really glad you spelled that one out for me because I did notice a lot of shit that I didn't notice at first. Yeah, uh, in present day, he is the guy who, when he is giving the Italian kid over to Chris Rock's uh, group, he takes him over there and is like, take care of this kid with your life. And Chris Rock makes a retort where he's like, what are you from Dublin, Italy? (laughs) All right, interesting, so, very cool. Um, and P- Jason Schwartzman is here. Uh, he's mm-hmm. playing the uh, sort of befuddled sort of son of Fada, who I guess is now the leader of the group. Yeah, interesting casting. I noticed a lot of the guys that would normally be just straight, like tough guys with low voices and shit in other shows were like specifically kind of nasally weird guys in this show, which is. A very Fargo choice, you know, like Reese, Steve, Semi, and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think of Chris Rock in this role as Loy Cannon? Oh, it's bold, man. Like, it's really hard to reconsider Chris Rock because of his, like, very tight work of 90s comedies. But, like, I'm trying so hard to works. give him a chance. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. hard to give him a chance, and it's paying off. He's doing good. I think it helps that he's playing this role kind of understated. He's not being all, like, right. full Chris Rock in this one. The closest he comes <laughs> is that pitch with the credit card. <laughs> he's very. He's being very... Sort of hidden, 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 uh, hidden under the radar on this one. You know what? Kind of True Detective vibes there because that really reminds me of the Vince Vaughn role in True Detective season two. Yeah, I mean the casting rather, not the role, the cast. I think uh, I think I'm gonna end up liking this a little bit more, mainly because I also like Chris Rock more. Than I like Vince Vaughn, but I think Vince Vaughn uh, did a decent job in that role, and I think Chris yeah, Rock does well. Thought, I did not like that season, but I kept watching it because I don't know. But like, I like seeing Vince Vaughn in it. Yeah. Uh, so basically, long story short, the Lloyd Cannon and his group, Cannon Limited, uh, get involved with the uh, make a truce with the Italians. Although the way the Italians seem to view it is that they're working for them. Wow. That can't that can't lead to anything bad. <laughs> so um, it takes about. Uh, a half hour for this program to sort of introduce all of its myriad of characters. We've got these two warring families, and meanwhile we have a uh, a funeral home director and his daughter, who is uh, a, bl- a uh, black lady. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> In Ooh, 1950s, that's something, because this man is white. Was, was this man one of the original crime family swap boys? 
I'm not so sure because there's a bit I, I where kinda... she comes into the kitchen and her mom and dad are with the Chris Rock's gang. Yeah, isn't it like implied that grown up kind of mild librarian whatever vibes, dude? That he was like from the gangster trade thing. I don't know. I, don't I think know. I think you might be Can right. I'm not sure. Stare, you got that? I feel like he was a character with a history behind that on the show. My brain was also dumb and didn't get it. All right, Sorry. All right. You guys ever analyze TV on the show? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, we only talk about it in, blame, in, in sort of uh, plain fashion. Huh. And then there was a the last man standing. <laughs> Tune in. So, uh, yeah, we get like 30 minutes in and then we finally get to like the big crux of the whole story here, which is that uh, Don, Don Fado is with his son. They're ha- or Fada. They're having a, com- a pretty tense conversation where uh, Jason Swartzman's character is like, "Listen, I uh, just give me a chance, and I'll like put these people in line." And the dad's like, "Listen, I, I don't care." So um, this is kind of like a, a Fargo bit here. I'm not sure how you guys feel about this. I'm kind of iffy, uh, but there's this bit here. <laughs> yeah, that's a word. There's this bit here where they seem to be like showing, like heightening the intensity to like Godfather levels, where you're like you're expecting like a big like <laughs> shootout to happen, and then like the it seems, and then also it seems like Don Fado's about to have a heart attack, like you know the Godfather, but then he just has a yeah. huge fart. It was a complicated sequence with a lot of turns in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I think the part that takes me out of it is this huge fart sequence, joke, though. which is like, am I watching an Adam Sandler yeah. comedy all of a sudden? This doesn't I feel thought, like I thought. For a second, yeah. I thought he just died, and that's why he was shitting himself. But, yeah. like, I think they sold it well at, like, imagining if you were there. Because if you're in that situation, and your dad, you almost just got, you thought you were getting rolled because you're so constantly paranoid all the time, that your dad has a fucking heart attack, and he's a dad, and then he lets off this massive fucking fart. Like, if you buy into that situation, that's a horrible fucking situation, and yeah. you give the actors, like, a chance with it. In I retrospect. Know, I thought this was a great sequence. I thought... They acted it really well. They yeah. what it was. In retrospect, it makes sense because uh, they need two things to happen. I would have been like, oh, of course, my dead dad just farted. This show's done. It's like a classic. Like, oh, um, now that I'm thinking about it a little more, it is like a classic like error of misfortune sort of thing because two things yeah. have to happen for this to go the exact way it does, which is that he has to let this massive one rip so that they roll the windows down. <laughs> And then uh, the, whoa, the, uh, the, uh, the people who are normally watching him have to be busy watching these two people who they think are part of Chris Rock's gang. So no yes. one's watching him and his son rolled the windows down and then a BB gun comes and just hits him in the jugular. <laughs> what was that? Was that a hit or was that literally like an accident? It was a that BB was gun. They have kids the, playing. Yeah, it was one of so the kids. So that kid shot him on accident? That wasn't like a hitman gangster kid or something? No. no it was just, yeah, it's not yeah. like The Wire. They didn't. I ended that episode not knowing who shot him and why. Oh, but it was some it was George H.W. Bush. Oh, interesting. <laughs> How to get out of there so quickly. No, I think it's their master oh, means it was, it was Lee Harvey I thought Oswald. we were talking about last week. <laughs> yeah. It was someone on a grassy knoll, and they they ran away. Oh, no, that's so why you get the good. shot of the kids running away with the guns, is because they accidentally shot this guy with a BB gun. Yes. Um, oh, so they God. take him to a hospital, and there's a bit here where this guy's like, uh, "Listen, you guys are Italian. We don't really like your. We don't really like you in our hospital. Yeah, it's a private hospital. Yeah, rough scene. Um, which is like pretty fucked up because I'm pretty sure this guy would have been mu- in much better condition if the if they hadn't had to drive him to another hospital. Oh, well, he would still be alive, probably. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's not lost upon w- the character. Also, I want to point out this guy. He clearly has no sense of self-reservation, taunting the mafia to like that. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what the deal is. That's how racist he is towards Italians. Yeah. Like maybe he's so racist he thinks like they couldn't even attack him or whatever, or like any like fuck that racist dude. Was he supposed to be English or something? I don't know. Yeah, I get, he gave up his kind white. of vibes, I guess. But it, but it, but Italians are white. Oh. Ooh. Oh, what but like, told, uh, what if I told you yeah. white and black are meaningless, and they just throw it around where it, they want it to be? No, I'm. Uh, you know, honestly, when I was a kid, me, my buddy was taking me. My buddy's dad was taking me to Guitar Center, and he's a Cuban guy, and he said, "Hey, never forget, kid. Like the word Hispanic is like a concept made up by people. People from those nations don't call each other Hispanic. Because this guy was Cuban. It's true. But, like, I. Ne- it's so interesting that like, all those words just are." To like, uh, we prefer to call them uh, urban. Yeah. 
so um sarah's right man they don't it's just like races that they keep you to keep voting for the big oil people the urban <laughs> italians here don't get to go have to go to the the uh regular the regular hospital the public yep, hospital the Minis- full of minnesota chicks yeah and uh jason Schwartzman kind of makes a power move here um so he 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 needs something to take the take the edge off so he does cocaine with his nurse um <laughs> who we were introduced to earlier as she was making micro not even microaggressions macroaggressions against uh the uh, the black the black daughter of the uh, Oh she meant well though she was just oh, yeah, that was a really fucked up. knowledge <laughs> Yeah that was a fucked up scene I'm glad they repre- I'm, or I was surprised they represented that character so I'm like, oh, that's just crazy random racist lady in a building yeah. scene. Right, the thing on. I wasn't expecting about this character is that she is literally like an angel of death. Apparently, I don't know, like, <laughs> yep. serial killer, I guess? Well, like, the way I remember it, like... Oh, I missed it the first time, but he asks her to kill... Oh, Yeah, that's right. While they're doing coke, um, he asks her to uh, kill his dad because he can't, he can't be bothered to look at her like that. And um, yeah, I missed that the first time. <laughs> and at the ending, I'm like, why is she? All right. Whatever. And she she agrees to do it. Um, and then when we get to the scene where she kills him, it's like pretty clear that this isn't her first time <laughs> murdering a patient. <laughs> she has like s- equipment set up and like takes a very long belabored process and sitting and making sure this man dies and also steals his ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they oh. really painted her as yeah. I thought she did it like of her own initiative at first. Um, I think that I think it's pretty clear. I don't know if like they're going for the serial killer angle, but that's what I'm getting from the right. end of this vibes where she's staring at the uh, the. Sarah, fe- you had yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Swanson. I thought you were done. And I was just coming in on your backbeat, but anyways, Sarah, you were just talking about natural born killers with L on that other. Yeah, I still haven't seen that yet. Uh, oh, <laughs> this just reminded me of that, like. In a way that I just oh uh, okay and, good yeah oh about yeah no I thought it was some Bonnie and Clyde shit where they just met and fell in love and the redhead was like all right I'll kill this old man for you you know uh, what I mean yeah which is like the pitch of natural born killers but um I mean you're saying she's a pre existing crazy person I don't know if the idea is that she might be in she might be down with killing this guy because he's Italian <laughs> she already does uh, I seem- thought she was just like I love this boy I'll kill for him. I think the uh, maybe that's the idea is that she was killing this guy because you know he's like a, he's like dirty to her. Yeah. Uh, oh uh, no, I, I just thought they fell in love and that's why she did it. No, I don't. But I'm not I, getting I any vibes it. of love between the two. Yeah, of them. Well, I thought that. And I'm like, I'm not buying it, but all right. <laughs> I kept watching. Um, My bad. Thanks. But Just yeah, the mo- the ma- that's really the majority of the show. There's a bit here where Chris Rock tries to sell credit cards, which made me dive into the history oh. of credit cards and find out that they weren't really yeah. prevalent until 1958. So this tracks for the show. Highlight sequence, in my opinion. Yeah, but there are quite a few now that we go th- now that we're going through it again, like the park uh, the park job sequence. But like this credit card sequence was great. It's definitely a highlight for this episode. Yeah, so Chris Rock and uh, Chris Rock's character, Loy, and his uh, associate Dr. Senator, which uh, he is neither a doctor nor a senator. His mom just thought it would be funny. That's a good bit. Did you notice that earlier? I noticed him I noticed the I pop noticed. up with the names, yeah. Yeah, the names popped up, and actually, <laughs> it's like, wow, I was glad he showed up later. Um, But they're selling a bit here where he, uh, they're like, listen, you know, People want to pay for stuff, but they don't want, they don't necessarily want the money right now. Why don't they pay, uh, they don't have the money right now. Why don't they pay on a credit card? And he hands them this like metal card and the guys, and they're like, maybe we'll make it on plastic later. Who knows? Um, really great shot. Like him and Dr. Senator, it it shows like Dr. Senator is like a way super smart dude. And like they have a perfect pitch, like coordinated between them where this guy comes in on this sentence and then he comes back. Like you can tell they've done this pitch to like every fucking bank in the state or whatever. Yeah. Because they're so killer at doing this fucking pitch for this credit card, which is inherently an obviously great idea. I mean, for a bank. And you can already tell where this is going the moment that he says he's from college or he, he like got a, he went to a college and the guy's like, yeah, and like, oh, the black college. Yeah. That's when you know there's just some asshole having a laugh or whatever. Yeah. I thought this would be a funny thing to do on his lunch break. Or so they come up with this golden idea pretty much, like the credit card. It's an idea that is like... It's like the credit card! Yes, yeah. Dude. Like, 
to be fair, uh, like this idea was, isn't like something that Chris Rock's character invented. The credit card, uh, and it was in like infancy stages and other things already at this point. Yeah. It's been, it's been around since like the 19, the beginning of the 1900s, but this wasn't oh, called just, a credit card. Yeah. Um, I just bought into it. It's like obviously like the best idea someone could invent. Or yeah, something. but it also it plays into this idea card. of like, of course, the credit card was pitched by someone and then stolen. Oh yeah, dude, just like chicken nuggets in the wire. Exactly. Yeah. Shit. Or um, another chicken nuggets guy actually was very rich. Oh, was it, it, wait, did David Simon <laughs> write it knowing that too? I think he just made. Yeah, I dude, don't think he th- knew. Dude, he's playing higher than you, man. I think You're David Simon David probably Simon. knew, but I don't know if the character <laughs> knew. Yeah, so Dave, so it's not like the wire's dumb. It's like, no, dude, he got your well actually, and he thought about it a long time before you, and it's actually <laughs> so. okay. So yeah. yeah, they make this pitch. The guy gives them this well, whole the like sucks. I don't moral know. superiority bullshit, where he's like, "We here at this bank would never stoop so low as to try and these. We have good, honest yep. people, and they." They would never. We would never try and sell these cards to drug dealers mm-hmm. or drug addicts, rather. Like the most perfectly opposite thing he could have said was every sentence he said. Yeah, and yeah. then he's like, "All right," uh, and then he's like, "I don't. I'm not interested." And they leave. Um, but the camera does draw in for a second on the banker. Like it draws in, like a Hitchcock, like the thing where you step out and zoom in, Simo or whatever, and it draws in on him. And uh, he actually considers it for like two beats and you see it. But then he's like, no, of course not, because he's fucking racist. Yeah. Like, yes. And that's another soundtrack point is it, it kind of holds the soundtrack on that Hitchcock zoom. And then once he decides to be a racist piece of shit, there's another like soundtrack motif of like this lazy crawling bass line, which like the guitar, it's very underproduced, very chill. But like if you hear it, it's such a good choice. And uh, so once again, ups to the sound design and a great sequence. And yeah, that's the thing. This is like... Uh, I, I I liked Chris Rock and Mo- and all of this, but this was like the standout scene for Chris Rock. Like he got to show the he got to show the stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. This is where I'm like, all right, Chris Rock, I got you, man. Because it's such a crazy like uncut gems type of cast. But like this is a scene where I'm like, all right, Chris, dude, I'm for sure I'm giving you a shot. That was a great sequence. So um, that's outside of that, we do get a shot of uh, a brief scene with Chris Rock and the rest of his family. Um. There's a bit here where uh, we get to see the uh, we get to see Don Fada get killed. That's all horrible um, for him. Yikes! I'm spooked. Yeah, that 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 was bad. Uh, and we end here with um, what do you guys think of the this this funeral home? I'm sure it's like a thing that's going to play into the rest of what's happening. But like right now, it, the the character of uh, uh, I think her name is Etherida. Who is um this uh this young black woman who's going to school? Uh, her father uh-huh. is um, she has mixed race parents who own this funeral home, and uh, the show the show ends with her having this conversation with her father talking about their financial problems, which I guess is why they might be hooking up with uh Chris Rock's group. Mm-hmm. So this is simultaneous because I kind of lost track with all the time jumps. I couldn't tell this was a contemporary event. Yeah, the, the reason uh, that they have her narrating the history is, I guess, because she's doing it for a history assignment. Right. Uh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's like it's a very layered show, and like rappers like that. Yeah. Good, good, good pick, Swanson. Um, and so they they the sh- the show ends with the um the nurse lady staring at them from her window. And that's unsettling and can't end anywhere good. Um, <laughs> the but, end. But yeah, I mean, that's yeah, pretty much it. What did you guys think of this this first episode of season four of Fargo? Stairmaster, you've got to tell him. It's, very, tell him. it's very front mode. It was set up, which is kind of a turn off. Yeah, for sure. I think I sure. would be more excited. Yes, that's one of the reasons that dampers my excitement to see more. So you mean like the the gangs of New York shit with the families and the history yeah. and the shit at the beginning? Yeah, that definitely was almost like a slow movie or something. Mm-hmm. I would give this. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think that's my opinions, my final thoughts. Um, I'll I'll say that I think I'll I'll agree. It was definitely very front loaded. There's a lot of plates that they have to juggle with this that they normally don't on the the se- the other seasons of the show. Um. And I, I'm interested to see how and if they can juggle them. 
I would say they did a good job of introducing Chris Rock's character. They did a good job of introducing Jason Schwartzman's oh, yeah. character. The nurse lady yep. is sort of a mystery right now. All the other yeah, characters, I'm energy. not sure if they're going to be able to invest the time in these uh, 11 episodes in total for the season to sort of make it worthwhile to have this big of a cast. But well. I mean, that is like 11 hours, man. Even like Ben-Hur wasn't fucking 11 hours. I guess it's true. I mean, that's a lot of time to explore characters, you know what I mean? Um, so, do you think he's going to meet Jesus in this? Is that what you're saying? You got to tune in to find out, buddy. Yeah. Which brings me to my final thoughts. I kind of came in on this podcast um, thinking I'd like give it a cynical oh. hot take, tune out or whatever. And I'm not saying where I'm tuning. I'm just saying my final thoughts are there are moments of incredible, not maybe not incredible, but there are moments of generally good cinematography and like oh. sequencing that looking back, like that credit card sequence, that like uh, BB gun sequence, like you hardly see sequences that could in television. Now, th- I'm not saying anything about the context or anything of those sequences. I'm just saying those sequences independent are some really cool things to see on TV. And I thought that was super fucking dope. What do you think, sir? Sure, why not? Yeah, that's a tune in. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I thought yeah, I was going to tune swayed. out because I was going to be like, I was going to be like Fargo. This isn't Fargo. Fargo's Fargo, like Fargo's Fargo. But like, I'm actually exploring the show with you guys, I think it was great to watch. I would watch some more, like maybe when I'm done with the boys. And yeah. just, I really appreciate those good touches and sound design and uh, directing and acting. But like, this is actually a good product, so I'm on board. And now that you've broken your Fargo loop, uh, I feel yeah. like maybe you can go back and we can try try that no. that season two again. You know? Oh yeah, maybe someday. Uh, you know, <laughs> time. But Let's uh, try True Detective season two again, you motherfucker. Well, Fargo season two is way better than True Detective <laughs> season two. This feels more like oh, True yeah. Detective season two. Although even then, I would say this is better. Uh, it's got an interesting Whoa. dynamic Whoa. to it. Fargo season four is True Detective season two coming from Swanson. That's a splat. Oh, says Swanson. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I'm sad. tuning. I'm giving this a light tune gonna... in. I'm not sure where light this is going. In, baby? Uh, <laughs> but I'm I, I like it so far. Chris Rock's doing great work. Jason Schwartzman, uh, pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah. Three of a kind, man. I mean, I would have to be a quite a cynical motherfucker to give this show a tune out now that I've explored it with you guys. Yeah. And that's uh, that's a tune in on season four of Fargo. Geo. Uh-huh. Anything that you feel like uh, you feel like plugging, giving giving a shout out to before we sign off here? Oh, I don't know. Tell people you love that you love them. That's about it. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, as always, of course, if you want to support us any way you can, uh, head on over to our Buy Me a Coffee page, Buy Me a Coffee slash TV Tuners, and uh, donate. That's oh, a great place to go. Yeah, another great place to go is our Discord. Tons of great conversation over there. Uh, you can also find that on our Buy Me a Coffee page. Uh, and, of course, every Thursday we have a uh, bonus podcast where we talk about the yes. anime franchise known as Bleach. Uh, it's the Thousand Year Bleach cast, and you can listen to that uh, every Thursday. And come back here every Tuesday for more TV goodness. Until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. I found him. <laughs> Wait for me. <laughs> hey, folks, it's time for the TV tuners back to the week. Did you know that Stairmaster? Is gay? Ha <laughs> ha, got him. <laughs>